Universal Studios producer, director, Mrs. B. Scene one. Hello, boys and girls around the world. My name is Mrs. B, and I'm a teacher in the United States. I'm so glad that you're able to join me today for a very special read aloud. But before we begin, I have a hello song just for you. And this is how it goes. Hello, boys and girls around the world. Hello, boys and girls around the world. How are you? How are you? I'm glad you're here to read and learn. We know we'll have some fun today. We love school every day. And so will you. Oh, yes, Mrs. B is a little bit silly and has a terrible singing voice. But I so wanted to share a song with all of you boys and girls. The book that I've selected is truly a classic. And I have the big book version out of all my videos. This is my big book. And it is called Curious George, boys and girls. There are so many books on different types on Curious George. And he's always getting into trouble. And the author of this beautiful story is H.A. Ray. He is the author of this book. And the person that drew the pictures is called an illustrator. And that person is the same person as the author, H.A. Ray. Boys and girls, you're going to read a lot of children's books that the author and the illustrator are the same person. They're just very talented individuals. So, boys and girls, this is the title, Curious George. This is called the front or the cover. If we turn it around, this is the back of the book. And you can see how old this book. I have nothing there but a blank page. And, boys and girls, I want you to pay close attention to Mrs. B. I want your eyes and ears on me because I'm going to be asking you several questions. And at the end, I have an activity that you'll be doing with me. And then I have an activity that you'll be doing at home with your family. Now, looking again at the title and the illustration, what do you think that the story is going to be about? <clears throat> Yes, Curious George is being taken away by the police. I will, oh, and a telephone, so I wonder if he was making some crank calls to people. Hmm. Or what was he doing on that phone that got him in trouble and arrested that he goes to jail, boys and girls? So let's see what kind of mischief George gets into in this story. But before we begin, boys and girls, reading means understanding the author's message. It's not just about calling out a bunch of words. If you cannot answer reading comprehension questions after reading a page, you have truly not read anything, boys and girls. So please pay close attention. Here is a picture on the inside cover. And this is George. And this is a big yellow hat. And do you think that George is going to put that hat on? You bet you. That's George for you. He's a very curious monkey, boys and girls. And monkeys are mammals just like us, and they have legs and feet. Two hands and two feet. Mm. 
This is George. He lived in Africa. He was a good little monkey. Oh, but always very curious, boys and girls. And here he is swinging and eating a banana. Boys and girls, I had a question to ask you. When you read, do you read left to right or right to left? I read left to right. You go to the next line and read left to right. Go to the next line and read left to right. And go to the last line and read left to right. And boys and girls, when you start a new sentence, the first letter in the word begins with a big letter, a capital letter. One day, George saw a man. Oh, he had on a large yellow straw hat. The man saw George too. What a nice little monkey, he thought. I would like to take him home with me. He put his hat on the ground. And of course, boys and girls, what did George do? George was curious. He came down from the tree to look at the large yellow hat. And there is George and the man is hiding. He wants to take him home with him. Boys and girls, we're going to make some predictions in this story. Prediction is when you guess what's going to happen next based on clues in the words and also pictures. And boys and girls, making predictions, if they're right or wrong, makes you a better reader. So it's okay to make wrong predictions. You know how many times, and I'm a teacher, Mrs. B has made wrong predictions when reading children's books, but that just makes me a better reader, just like you. So let's put our thinking caps on and find out what's going to happen next. Do you think that he's going to put the yellow hat on? Hmm. The hat had been on the man's head, but George thought it would be nice to have it on his own head. He picked it up and put it on. So if you guessed that George was going to put the hat on his head, you are right. Boys and girls, what color is the hat? Yellow. You know your colors. I like that, boys and girls. What is going to happen next? Is he going to grab the monkey or put him in a bag? What is going to happen? Like a burlap bag? Hmm. The cat covered George's head. He couldn't see. The man picked him up quickly and popped him into a bag. <sighs> Looks like a burlap bag. George was caught. Oh, no. George, why did you try to put on the hat? Now the man has you. wonder what he's going to do with the monkey. Does he want him as a pet? Or he's going to take them to a zoo? Hmm. Let's see. The man with the big yellow hat put George into a little boat. And a sailor rowed them both across the water to a big ship. George was, was he happy or sad? He was sad, but he was still a little curious. Because look at him looking outside on the boat here. He wants to, to look at the fish. Hmm. Now they're on a bigger boat, boys and girls. They're on a big ship. Things begin to happen. The man took off the bag. George sat on a little stool and the man said, George, I am going to take you to a big zoo in a big city. You will like it there. Now run along and play, but don't get into trouble. George promised to be good, 
but it is easy for little monkeys to forget. And here is George sitting on a stool, and here is the man sitting down. We have a lot of yellow colors, boys and girls, as you can see. So maybe the author's favorite color is yellow. Where do you think George is going to go next? He's going to go to the front of the ship. On deck. On the deck, he found some seagulls. He wondered how they could fly. He was very curious, boys and girls. Finally, he had to try. It looked easy, but he's pretty close. Look at that. He's on the ledge that's close to the edge. And by the water, he can fall, boys and girls. Here are seagulls. Do you think that Curious George is going to fall into the water, boys and girls? Yes or no? I say yes, boys and girls. Hmm. It's very dangerous what he's doing. Oh, what happened? Oh, first this. Pretending he's a seagull. And then this happened. Boys and girls, is he going to drown? Or is somebody going to help him? Let's find out. Where is George? There's more than one person on deck looking for him. The sailors looked and looked. At last they saw him struggling in the water and almost all tired out. Is he going to make it, boys and girls? How many sailors do we have? Do we see? One, two, three. Actually, this is maybe the captain. So these are sailors. One, two. But we do have three people looking for George and the water, boys and girls. Oh, and two sailors saved him. Man overboard, the sailors cried as they threw him a life belt. George caught it and held on. At last he was safe on board. And look at all the water and the fish coming out of his mouth. And they were able to grab two of his feet. How many fish did he swallow? One, two, three, four. Wiggle four of your fingers. Show me four. Hide your thumb. Good job, boys and girls. After that, George was more careful to be a good monkey until at last the long trip was over. George said, get, said goodbye to the kind sailors. Say goodbye. How do we say goodbye in French? Au revoir. Can you say it with Miss B? Au revoir. Bye-bye. Until at last the long trip was over, George said goodbye to the kind sailors, and he and the man with the yellow hat walked off the ship onto the shore, and on into the city to the man's house. So first, I guess we're going to stop at the man's house and then go to the zoo. Well, here they are. After a good meal and a good pipe, George felt very tired. Look at the big pajamas. They're a little bit too big for him. It's probably the man's pajamas, boys and girls. What color is the two chairs that George is sitting in? Green. Good job, boys and girls. Now, is this book 
fiction or nonfiction. We're trying to figure out the genre. Now, fiction means it's pretend or make believe, and nonfiction is it's true. It could happen in real life. So, is this book fiction or nonfiction? It's fiction. It's pretend or make believe. It can't happen in real life. He crawled into bed and fell asleep at once. And he has some bananas here in case he gets hungry for a snack. The next morning, boys and girls, the man telephoned the zoo. George watched him. He was fascinated with that telephone. Then the man went away. George was curious. He wanted to telephone too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What fun. He was dialing his little heart away. Can you count with me, boys and girls, to ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good job, boys and girls. This can get him in big trouble, boys and girls. Ding-a-ling, ding-a-ling. George had telephoned the fire station. Boys and girls, that's not a good thing. The fire station is there to help people that really need it, and he is making a crank call. The firemen rushed to the telephone. Hello, hello, they said, but there was no answer. Then they looked for the signal on the big map that showed where the telephone call had come from. They didn't know it was George. They thought it was a real life fire. Oh no, what has George done, boys and girls? Hurry, 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 the firemen jumped onto the fire engines and onto the hook and ladders. Ding dong, ding dong, everyone out of the way. Hurry, hurry, hurry. They think it's a real life fire, uh, boys and girls, and that they're going to have to rescue maybe some people or animals. What has George done? The firemen rushed into the house. They opened the door. No fire, only a naughty little monkey. Oh, catch him, catch him, they cried. George tried to run away. He almost did. But he got caught in the telephone wire, boys and girls. Are they going to catch George? Yes or no? What do you think? I say they're going to catch him. And he's going to be punished for making a poor choice. A thin fireman caught one arm and a fat fireman caught the other. You fooled the fire department. They said, we'll have to shut you up where you can't do any more harm. They took him away and shut him in a prison, boys and girls, where bad people go when they make a poor choice or a decision. And there he is, lonely and sad and thinking about, what have I done? George wanted to get out. He climbed up to the window. And he climbed up to the window to try the bars. Just then the watchman came in. He got on the wooden bed to catch George, but he was too big and heavy. The bed tipped up. The watchman fell over. And quick as lightning, George ran out through the open door. Oh, no, boys and girls. You're not supposed to leave this place when you made a poor choice. You have to stay there until they're ready to say you can go. So George is escaping without permission. <clears throat> he hurried through the building and out to the roof, and then he was lucky to be a monkey. Out he walked onto the telephone wires quickly and quietly over the guard's head. 
George walked away. He was free, boys and girls. Down in the street, outside the prison wall, stood a... Who is that? The balloon man. A little girl bought a balloon for her brother. George watched. He was curious again. He felt he must have a bright red balloon. Which, boys and girls, is a red balloon? Can you point to a red balloon? And can you point to a blue balloon? Can you point to a green balloon? Good job, boys and girls. He reached over and tried to help himself, but I think George is going to fly high in the sky with all those balloons. What do you think, boys and girls? Put your thinking caps on. Instead of one balloon, the whole bunch broke loose. In an instant, the wind whisked them all away. And with them went George, holding tight with both hands. Oh, boys and girls. He's going to go far, far away and high, higher in the sky. Where is George going to go? Hmm, let's find out. Up, up he sailed, higher and higher. The houses looked like toy houses, and the people like dolls, and George was frightened, boys and girls. He held on very tight. I wonder if he's going to be able to land safely. At first, boys and girls, the wind blew in great gusts, then it quieted. Finally, it stopped blowing altogether, and George was very tired. Down, down he went, bump, onto the top of a traffic light. Here is the traffic light. Everyone was surprised. The traffic got all mixed up. George didn't know what to do. And then he heard someone call, George! He looked down and saw his friend, the man with the big yellow hat. He came to find his friend, George. He was able to land safely, boys and girls, on top of the traffic lights. George was very happy. The man was happy, too. George slid down the post, and the man with the big yellow hat put him under his arm, and then he paid the balloon man for all the balloons. And then George and the man climbed into the car, and at last, away they went. So he paid the man for the balloons, because boys and girls, George took the balloons without paying. And that's how the man makes a living. They took all the balloons with them, and off they drove away. To the zoo. What a nice place for George to live, boys and girls. Let's see. What do we see are some of the animals there that are there? Giraffe. We have king of the jungle the lions we have bears we have a polar bear we have a zebra elephants ostrich penguins we even have a frog over here or a toad and he's having fun in the tree with what color balloon red The end, boys and girls. What did you think about the story, Curious George? If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you did not like it, give it a thumbs down. 
I gave it a thumbs up. Boys and girls, this is truly a classic, and I enjoyed sharing it with all of you. Now, boys and girls, before we do the activity that you're going to be doing with your family at home, I have some balloon words. And boys and girls, they are all nouns. A noun is a person, place, animal, or thing. I'm going to call out a word to you that's on the balloon. You tell me if it's a person, place, animal, or thing. So we'll do a few of them. Boys and girls, what is man? Is it a person, place, animal, or thing? Person. What about zoo? Zoo is a place. What about balloon? Thing. Good job. What about hat? Thing. And what about monkey? What is monkey? Animal. Good job, boys and girls. Now I have an activity for you to do at home. The monkey's name is George. And we're going to do an acrostic poem. You're going to use the first letter like in, in this one, this is my example, but we're going to use your first name, boys and girls. So George, and then you're going to use the letter G, and George gets into mischief. So you're going to make a word with starting with the letter G, and then you're going to make some more words followed by the first word. Then E eats bananas. O often in trouble. So a couple words after, like phrase. You're doing phrases, not complete sentences. R, really curious. G goes to the zoo. So G, you make a word that begins with the letter G, and we made the word goes. E, expert climber. So E begins with the word expert, expert climber. Now, I want you to take your first name and put it down like this, so it's going to be horizontal. And then I want you to make a word and then follow it by a couple words after that to make acoustic poem, boys and girls. Now, parents, grandparents, older brothers and sisters, they're going to dictate to you, and I want you to elicit responses from them. And then I want you to let them copy it onto a piece of paper. Then they can stand up and share it with other family members. And if they attend school, they can share it with the teacher and classmates during show and tell. And here is my example again. Boys and girls, I have one last treat for you. Someone is visiting me here in my classroom, and I wonder who it could be. It's one of my assistants, and no, it's not the Siberian tiger behind me. He's resting. He's protecting me. And this is my mini classroom and also my office in the state of Michigan. I work with students here seven days a week. I have a round table that I sit with the student. And then I have a big dry erase board that's on a stand because I do a lot of writing when I'm teaching. Let's see who is our special guest. It's my good monster. Oh, hello, boys and girls. Oh, thank you for visiting Mrs. B and all the boys and girls around the world. Would you like to help me say goodbye to all of them? Oh, he would. Boys and girls, reading is fundamental. 
and I thank you for joining Mrs. B during this read aloud. Bye for now. Aww.